A few weeks ago, we released a video talking about the new website actions in LinkedIn ads and how you can use those to create more meaningful remarketing lists. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. But one of the other things that you can do with website actions is to create new conversion actions in your LinkedIn account. Just like with the remarketing lists, I think there's a lot of really cool customization you can do to your conversion tracking. So in this video, I wanna walk you through how you can use LinkedIn ads new website actions to create better conversion tracking in your account. So we're in a live client LinkedIn ads account. And just like the remarketing list video, we're gonna to have to blur a decent amount of it out because we wanna actually show you what the workflow looks like in a live account. We'll do our best to make sure that you can still see the functionality, but just know there's gonna to have to be a decent amount that's gonna be blurred. Let's start off by showing the original conversion tracking setup and how we would need to put together different URL patterns to make a cohesive conversion action. So I'm gonna go over to analyze. I'm gonna click on conversion tracking. And then in this account, you can see we have two conversion actions set up. And the action that makes it the most clear about how challenging it can be to set up these conversion actions is gonna be the second one, all thank you pages. So if I just click on this one, we're gonna skip past this first step. And here is how we would need to set up our original conversion tracking. We would use the manual conversion setup. We would have it fire on a page load and then we would use any URLs that contained thank you or thank you without the dash in the middle or any URLs that contain dash TY. That was the naming convention for any of the thank you pages that are on this client website. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do think LinkedIn has some of the best URL options that you can create in conversion tracking or audience creation. We already have two or statements. You could add in another or rule or you could create an and also, so an and statement. And there's lots of customization you can create in these conversion events in LinkedIn. But if your naming convention is even more complex than having three different versions of a thank you page, it might make sense to start using website actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. And there are two ways that you can start to create a new conversion action with website actions. The first is gonna be very similar to how you would create that action originally. Let's just go up to create conversion. We're gonna use insight tag conversion since the website actions are from the insight tag itself. And just like any other conversion, the first thing you need to do is give it a name and then define the category. I'm just calling an example because I'm not gonna save it. And then we need to choose a category. We'll just stick with submit application. And then you have all of the different controls you can have here for conversion value, the different attribution models, and different timeframes. For now, I'm just gonna skip this and go to the next step where we start to get our first engagement with the website actions. As you can see here, this is new for this account. I haven't set any up like this. So LinkedIn is telling me that now I can track conversions from vital website buttons and pages to measure how the ads influenced diverse actions such as ebook downloads. Very helpful, thank you, got it. So the first thing you're gonna to need to choose here is website actions. You'll remember in the previous conversion event, we used the manual conversion setup, but for website actions, we have to stick in this area over here. And then as we scroll down just a little bit, we have a pretty simple builder. The first thing I wanna call out is you need to choose the domain that your company is using. This one is using a handful of different domains, so I'm not gonna click on this button because all we would need to do is blur all the names. But if you're utilizing multiple domains or subdomains, you'll first need to select which domain you're using before you decide which website actions you wanna include. Once you've done that, now comes the fun part. From the URL rules, we can now use either buttons clicked or pages viewed as the trigger for conversion actions in LinkedIn ads. I'm gonna start off with an example of a button click that is highly valuable on this site, but is tougher to track than some of the other conversion actions. In the example I showed you where everything was already set up, there are thank you pages that are associated with the different conversion actions. But there's also a button click for a contact us that actually operates a form in an iframe. So there's no thank you page that users are sent to when they fill out the contact us form. So if I come into this field right here and I search contact, you can see that there are two buttons that'll pop up. Contact us, which appears on 72 pages and the one that I want, and contact support, which is decidedly not what I want, 
because anybody actively trying to seek out support is probably already using the solutions from this company and doesn't need to be counted as a conversion. And now I can create a conversion action based on users who submitted the contact us form in addition to any of the other forms on the site. Now, as I mentioned, this would not be an option for me to make with a page URL rule because the contact us form lives on 72 different pages. They're all drastically different and there's no consistent naming convention. So writing URL rules for this would be nearly impossible. This would be a more specific conversion event you'd have to set up utilizing lots of different rules in Tag Manager based on a button click. And while that is still feasible, you can definitely do that through Google Tag Manager. It's a lot easier to just do it directly in the LinkedIn interface and not have to worry about all those additional steps, variables, and all that stuff in Google Tag Manager. Now on the other side, you can utilize pages to search for specific page URLs. And this will operate pretty similar to how you would set up the URL rules with the previous conversion actions. But rather than using logic that will include every single URL that has that naming convention in it, you'll only fire for pages that you've checked the box next to. So let's just find that thank you URL again in here. So I'm just gonna type in thank. And here you can see we have three different URLs that contain thank you. Well, they at least contain thank. The first two actually have thank dash you included in them, but the third one is thankful. It's a post on the blog about what they're thankful for this year. So that's one that I wouldn't want to include. Now, in my opinion, making website action conversions based on pages might not be quite as useful as the button conversions, simply because pages are already kind of how you would create individual conversion actions with the URL rules. But I can think of a scenario where maybe you have one to two specific URLs that you wanna use as a thank you page or as a primary conversion action page that has naming convention that is very similar and difficult to distinguish from others. It would be pretty easy to come in here and just check a box next to the individual page and run from there. And the other benefit I'll say with website actions is that although I've checked the box next to two pages, if I go back to the buttons tab and type in contact again, I've still got the contact us button included in this conversion action. So not only the two thank you pages that I clicked on, but also the contact us button will be included in this website actions conversion event, meaning you can combine your URL rules with specific button clicks to make a more cohesive conversion action on your website. So you won't need to have a separate one for buttons as compared to pages, you can have them all included in one. So anybody who fills out the form or makes a purchase or whatever your conversion action is can be included in that one website action conversion. You don't have to make multiple different ones and apply multiple different conversion actions to your campaigns. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna save this one. So let's just click out of this, click cancel. Because there is one other way that you can create a website actions conversion event in LinkedIn. And that's simply to go directly to the website actions page. You'll still have the option to choose the domain in the upper right. You can then view individual button click actions or page visits, but then pretty easily you can again search for either of those or just start to opt into any number of actions that are on the site. And then you can head up to create conversion. It'll opt you into the same first page where you just need to add in a little information. Again, I'm not gonna save this, so I just chose the first couple things. Click next. And now you'll see that the section down here below has the three buttons that I opted into originally on that website actions page. It retained all of the actions that I wanted. So all I have to do now is finish the setup process and I have a new conversion action that I can apply to my campaigns. Honestly, I'm a really big fan of these website actions from LinkedIn ads. It seems like a really easy thing for them to have done to make it so the platform is just that much more useful and that much more meaningful. I can't tell you how many times I've had to create really complex conversion rules because my client's website naming convention just wasn't as clear as I would like it to be, or that we've completely missed out on conversion tracking because forms were in iframes that we couldn't get access to, or the form itself just didn't have a thank you page associated with it. So now that we have individual button actions and also pages that people have viewed as part of the website actions process, makes it a lot easier for us to customize the conversion actions, have a more holistic look at the actions people are taking on the site, and make sure that our campaigns are optimizing toward those right conversion actions. 
If you have any other questions about website actions for conversion setup, remarketing audience setup, or anything else on the LinkedIn platform, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.